Hello. Hey, Michal. Nice photo. Uh, background. <laughs> for, for a second, I was like, what? <laughs> I just do it specially to show you it <laughs> and to check your no, new haircut. My new haircut? Yes. I'm still bald. Nothing changed. Oh, you already started recording. Uh, yeah, yeah, because Fran, uh, he's, uh, he'll be late today. Um, and for now, the meeting is kind of hosted by him somehow, and he had to uh, set a automatic recording. But he will probably cut out the beginning, especially no. your entrance. <laughs> Let me prepare this the screen to share. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Hey, Fran. Uh, hey, Lucas. So there's a lot of noise around me, and I don't think uh, I'll be able to speak so much. Uh, just not now. There's not so much uh, noise right now, but there will be soon. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, 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 we can. We can. But okay. at the end, I mean, if you don't have anything to say, it's also good if you don't say. Okay, okay. I mean, just. Uh, <laughs> I'll be here just in case you need something uh, like triggering the recording or something, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. So far, the recording is already started, so. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Okay, so let's, I think let's kick off. It's three past uh, six, probably no, no, no more people will join. So the agenda for today is fixed, but, uh, um, Francesco, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm pretty new on this call, so remind me if it's your first time on the call or you've been it's here my, before. It's my my first time on the on the call. I just interact with, uh, with you guys on, on Slack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regarding Java stuff, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Um, so maybe before I will go in details to the agenda items, not sure if you want to stay for the whole meeting or not. Uh, so maybe, did you join to have, do you have specific question you'd like to ask first? Or you just want to stay for the whole meeting and you don't mind if I go through the whole agenda? I was just curious about how you guys are handling things. What is the, the status of the community? And I thought that joining the, the call would have been a good thing to start learning about the, the project and where you're going. So if you don't mind, I will be online just listening. Sure, that's that's fine. But the, uh, the answer is uh, community is doing well. I mean, we're um, going forward as you're going to see on the at the agenda, we have some uh, topics uh, typically related to the uh, to the project, how we handle uh, working on the, with the code, and how to make it standardized so it's much better for the community to contribute and onboard. Okay, perfect. So it's so it's pretty good, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, there are three three topics, but the second one is kind of let's say two in one. So the first one is automate NPM uh, releases. Um, so at the moment, uh, the current situation with the CI is that we have, uh, in case of the, uh, for example, generator, uh, we have uh, releases that say a bit uh, semi-manual. 
So we, um, the CI, of course, is responsible for publishing uh, Docker images and NPM packages. But to trigger uh, the release, uh, we manually tag um, uh, the repo uh, with proper tag. Uh, Semver is used. And then the CI picks up that there's a tag uh, change to the repo and uh, triggers the publishing of Docker image and NPM. And I wanted to briefly kind of discuss uh, how we could fully automate, also automate the NPM publishing. So it's also much easier to release. It's not just one person that has to do the tag or make a judgment about the tag. It can be more people because I think it's going to be much easier than to grow a number of uh, maintainers. And one of the, at least, uh, the solution that I know that I've noticed, I never used it on my own, but I uh, I saw it in many projects, is that they uh, they kind of introduce a um, conventional commits. Let me open the, the link. So basically, the uh, the commits have a a given prefix uh, that indicates uh, what kind of change is it, and basing on those uh, on those prefixes we can then um, um, set on the CI that uh, if a commit is um, uh, core, for example, then nothing is changed because it's a, a commit that is not changing anything in the package. But if there's a, um, uh, there's a, um, a fix or, or some different prefix that we uh, decide basing on the, on the spec, uh, the CI is uh, doing a, a patch or minor or, or major release. Um, and there are many, many known projects, for example, Electron that probably, you know, many of many people know Electron. So that's, for example, how they are, uh, they're working. So when you go to the history of commits, all of them, they're, uh, uh, they prefixed. And that's not the only project that is doing it. And, um, that's the most adopted, I would say, solution that people use to, to automate uh, publishing of the packages. Um, of course, except of prefixes, we could think about just uh, some specific labels on the pull requests. But I think, um, I mean, from my point of view, there's no point to, um, to reinvent the wheel if uh, the community is already adopting the conventional commits. Um, anyone has any opinion to this one? Uh, okay, so in general, the person that has a right access to the uh, repository will be responsible for taking care of the commit uh, names and descriptions, right? Yeah. Because when you create the pull request, you can do anything you want. And as I notice uh, on the first, first point, you suggest that uh, all commits should be squashed, right? Yeah. So the maintainer will be responsible for that and uh, giving the uh, proper content for the commit message. Yeah, exactly. Because the as you as you noticed, you've read my story, which is I thank you so much. Um, so it's uh, um, as you noticed. Uh, so we during this quashing, uh, you can amend the uh, the commit message, and the maintainer should know. Uh, what given change is doing to the project, if it's a fix or not, uh, what version should be, if it's minor, major, or patch. Uh, so he's making this final call, amending the commit message, merging pull request, and the CI is triggered. Potentially, you can also template it. Uh, what do you mean by template it? So in, uh, in Git, you can, you can provide a, um, a, a template for how the message will look like. In this way, there is a kind of guideline that people can can follow. Oh, so. but you mean template it according to the uh, the conventional commits specific? Es essentially, making sure that the the first message in the in the in the commit, which, which will be the, the one that you would pick it up, has a specific format. So it should start with a column doc or column fixed or column something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know it's possible actually. So you say it's a template for kids, for kids, right? 
Yes. Okay. For the for the for the message. For the message, yeah. I think. It's definitely possible for the for the PR body because we're using it uh, a lot. Yeah, but, but for the PR body, uh, it's something different than the uh, commit message, right? <laughs> but if it is possible to template the commit message, that's, I think it's OK. But uh, it takes care of the uh, Git uh, files, or you need to configure it by yourself on your computer the uh, for, the... for commits. Actually, I, I would just rely on the, on the PR one. And it's based on the .git folder that you commit in your in your repo. Ah, okay. So the PR uh, messages are not taking care in the commit message. There's something as a reference uh, used by as a reference, but it's not the commit message when you squash uh, your pull request. Then uh, the first commit in the pull request is used as the message, but you can of course edit it in the Git hub. But uh, in the template, the potential contributor can uh, already prepare something what can be copied based to the commit message. So the template will be useful in my opinion. Okay, um, but in general, um, have you, I mean, like Francesco, you're uh, more into Java, right? And Mihao, uh, I mean, I know where you're from and I don't, rem uh, we never managed to finally introduce this automated NPM publishing. Uh, but do anything, did you see something, some different way of, of doing it maybe? you know, some different way of um, automated bumping of version, like maybe with how the, how it's done with Java and, and uh, Maven, for example, when you want to push it to. Some of the of the projects that I'm following, they use a version five, which is a pretty annoying thing because you have to remember to, to bump it and they have a, a validation based on, on it. But I'm not sure that there is a single way of addressing it in in java okay okay thanks for the link okay so let's um So I would say for this topic, um, let's go and try it, uh, try it out how it would work. Um, especially uh, this part of making sure that uh, people follow and know what to do. Next one, uh, CI cleanup. Let me open the issue. <clears throat> so it's an issue from Robert. Um, I think the result, the the, uh, the first reason why it was created was a a pull request that he was reviewing when I was adding the automated publishing of Docker images. Uh, where I just touched the make files and SH scripts. And the, basically the, uh, the idea from uh, Robert here is to, um, again, make the project as friendly as possible to as large uh, a number of developers as possible from different operating systems, um, especially Windows, uh, because we have, for example, if it comes to generator, we have a make file with its targets. Uh, which is not so uh, straightforward to use in Windows. Um, and 
we had longer uh, discussion here, exchange here. And I mean, at the end, I ag agreed that, especially in, in Node.js, it's uh, super easy to get rid of um, uh, the make file uh, because NPM allows you to have custom scripts defined in NPM. So instead of having just additional make file uh, to trigger uh, Docker build, uh, it's better to have a script uh, so later on we can do just npm run uh, docker build um, and the the only part in the sh script that is there is the uh, uh, it's a script where we figure out the the version that we need to add to the uh, to the docker image to the tag of the old docker image and this can be uh, fully moved to the ci it doesn't have to be in the script um, so from my point of view, I mean, it's, it's, um, we should go this direction to get rid of those. Um, any opinions from your side? Uh, okay. But this is only about the generator repository or also the others. You are asking about the Go projects, for example. Yeah, so we uh, we didn't like the scope of this issue is uh, to tackle the generator, um, and anyway, um, then when this issue was created, I voiced out that uh, maybe we should talk about um, a solution for all the repos, uh, but then we have only uh, JavaScript and Go, and generic solution for both um, would probably be a uh, make file. <laughs> but again, it's really rare to get, I think, um, contributors that will contribute to both. Um, so if we can at least make it friendly um, to Java uh, script developers and have a usual approach that uh, community has to have these uh, targets inside the NPM, uh, the packet JSON, um, then I don't think it's a, a problem. Of course, we cannot uh, do it in Go. Um, okay, so in general, the unification in case of the language, uh, so for Go, you should uh, have, uh, let's say, make files with similar target, but for uh, JavaScript, you, you will use uh, package JSON, right? Uh, so it always depends on the language, but have uh, unification per language in whole organization. Right? You're summarizing what I said, right? Uh, yes. So yes. I'm, I'm asking yes. if I correctly understood it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Uh, uh okay and the um the other part of the issue is about uh wait just comment yeah exactly um so for for node.js um i think it's pretty common in the previous in my past projects i was always using the uh, the scripts from npm, uh, like uh, from package JSON, so we could do npm run whatever. Um, and for Go, as you said, um, we're gonna use Kima guys to tell us what's the best. Yeah, because in case of Go, it depends on uh, which company is behind the project. <laughs> because for Google, they use a Bazel, that is pretty complicated. Um, then the other part of the issue is the uh, adding some uh, static code analysis. And I mean, it's pretty obvious that at some point of time we have to have those um, checks, uh, especially that generator uh, can run on server, people can run it in different environments. We should um, um, make sure that the all the checks are, are in place. Uh, so let's do static code analysis. I don't see any problem here. It's just a matter of probably researching what tools we should choose. But I, th I think it's pretty obvious we need it, right, guys? Okay. 
Now then the, the last item is splitting CI jobs. Um, so we have, oh, comment. Yeah, me, me neither. Um, I also don't have an opinion, uh, never used them. In my previous projects, I was always provided with tools that I could easily integrate. Uh, here, we just have to find the one that is for free for open source. Um, uh, then the splitting uh, the CICD jobs. Um, Um, okay, uh, splitting CICD jobs, I'm starting this topic for the third time. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, also pretty good practice and standard that we should follow, that we should have um, clear separation of the stages uh, in, the, in the CI. We should probably just uh, write it down somewhere as a rule. That's it. Um, and then follow it on the... Mm -hmm on the review to make sure that it's uh, that it's applied. Um, so let me just summarize. And last topic, any objections to you? So we have basically the CI at the moment is um, is covered with Travis, um, except of two exceptions. One uh, for the Async API um, uh, website. Uh, this, uh, because we're using uh, Netlify uh, for publishing, we also use it for, for building of the website. So let's say the whole CI is based on uh, Netlify. It didn't make sense to do something different. And for the generator recently, I uh, when I was doing the automation of Docker image uh, publishing, we used um, uh, GitHub Actions. And I would say this is really the, the direction we should choose. It's really handy to use and the amount of plugins, the community growing around uh, GitHub Actions, uh, it's just crazy um, how much it grows and you know, how good it is. So I would say um, as we go forward, whenever we do some changes, um, some improvements, let's um, let's pick one and let's, let's um, make sure to use uh, GitHub Actions. Uh, okay, so in general, I also vote for the GitHub Actions because they are really nice and are integrated with the GitHub by themselves. Uh, but there is, as far as I remember, there's one problem with GitHub Actions. That means it is not possible to restart uh, jobs uh, on mergers to the master branch. So if, if anything fails, then you have to create a new pool, a new commit to trigger the job. Maybe it was uh, already fixed. I don't know because I last look at them, uh, look at uh, GitHub Actions, I don't know, two months ago. So I, I don't know the current status. Maybe you know something, Lukasz? Um, I didn't check that. So, um, but the question would be why, why there would be a failure that I need to rerun? Uh, for example, if, if if uh, pushing the new versions of your uh, application to NPM or something like that, or creating, pushing the new uh, Docker image to the Docker registry or something like that, if something fail on that stage, you will need to trigger or, for example, create the new release or something like that. But this is something uh, that should have really happen really rarely. But uh, you need uh, to remember about that that okay. there was no option to restart the job. Okay. 
if some integration fail. Okay, and Fran mentions the the risk of vendor locking. Um, I'm not sure if it's in this case it's a big problem, uh, especially that as far as I know, GitHub Actions were just um, copied from uh, uh, the the CI solution that. Um, uh, what's the name of this competition to GitHub? I just forgot. GitLab. Uh, GitLab, yeah. So at the end, GitLab had it long, long time before uh, it, and user users using GitLab were using it without any issues. So I think it's pretty natural that when you have GitHub and now we have GitHub Actions, um, I understand there might be a risk for vendor locking, but for open source project like like we are, I would say we should even use it more because it's more integrated and much easier. Um, especially I loved the, uh, the way of passing security uh, keys. With Travis, I, as far uh, the last time I was using it, I, I had to use the CLI to make sure that the to somehow encrypt the uh, the secrets to save it in Travis. And here it's just um, smoothly integrated with the GitHub um, UI. On the repo level, you just set secrets and then use them in the pipeline. So it's it's really pretty pretty easy to maintain. Okay, so um, and last but not least, but that's that's pretty long one. Um, in part, not. So uh, Fran will not be so happy here. <clears throat> so we that's a issue I created some time ago. Uh, Jonas is already okay with it. Um, so first topic is that at the moment, um, the, the changes uh, by maintainers are done in the feature branches on the, on the, um, uh, on the upstream repositories. Um, in my opinion, if we are supposed to grow uh, larger, um, uh, we should um, use the standard approach for, for the projects and like the projects, large projects that are well adopted, uh, uh, they um, follow the approach that everyone, maintainer, maintainer or not, uh, everyone uh, contributes to the project from the, from the fork. It's not so hard as it seems. Okay, the chat. <laughs> yes. Yes, you can, of course, bypass, unless we use some um, plugin that can automate everything. And then, um, for example, you don't have to have right access to the repo because some bot can uh, do the merging for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, at the end, it's possible to overwrite, but there's a huge advantage of following this approach. No feature branches uh, visible um, in the upstream and also no orphan feature branches that, yeah, I know you're kidding. And um, can you see, by the way, the chat when I open it and comment it? Guys? Uh, no, we don't see chat. Oh, okay. Your chat. I mean, it's our chat. Like you can see the chat as well, but when I open it on my screen, you don't see I'm sharing it, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So I'm next time I'm gonna mention that I'm reading the chat. So a friend in the chat is uh, made some comments about the topic, um, but they are rather jokes. Uh, we can ignore them. Um, so one thing is uh, forks only. As I already mentioned, once we agree, I can promise that I'm gonna write some simple document that explains um, how much nicer uh, work with the fork, how to set your master. Um, 
to follow the um, upstream master. Um, so it's pretty um, easy then to to use a fork on your local. You don't even see a big change then in the workflow. So any objections to the forks? Awesome. Um, some cleanup of the settings. So we have uh, wiki and projects enabled. Oh, wait, there's a comment from Fran. So Fran uh, commented that it's actually actually um, better to use forks. That's that's good. Um, and we're gonna the same maintainers, if we follow the same approach, we're gonna experience exactly the same flow as others. Exactly. Um, now, the um, I would just say that do some cleanup and make sure that we don't have uh, wikis and projects enabled in the tabs because we already have a lot of tabs uh, in the repo. Uh, we don't use uh, those, so let's just disable them. Objections? Okay, uh, squash merging only. So my suggestion would be to enforce uh, squash and merging only on the repo. So you cannot merge a pull request in a classical way that later on looks uh, like on a attached uh, image. So um, the first commit that you can see is a result of squash and merge. And the second one is a result of a merge, typical merge, like classical merge. Um, so again, even like um, you could see the the example of Electron, and I I, I would say uh, most of the mature projects they follow the approach that they have really clear uh, a clean history of the commits. Um, um, so instead of merge, that does not say more, uh, too much. If you don't click on the uh, link, uh, you can have a descriptive uh, commit message. And again, it's also needed for the um, conventional commits that we discussed at the beginning of the meeting. Any objections? Okay, cool. Um, and last but not least, introduce uh, code owners. Uh, so in the past uh, project I worked with in, in the project where we had code owners and we could uh, nicely leverage um, uh, from it by um, ha having an automated way of um, assigning uh, poking um, um, proper maintainers uh, to check the uh, um, check a particular pro, um, pull request and have them as a uh, required reviewers. Um, so without the their approval, uh, the merge is not possible. Um, that setting, first of all, it's um, it would give a clear information who's the code owner, so who's the, uh, the maintainer of the of the uh, given repository at the moment and uh, and its parts, and I think in the uh, in the generator, especially when you have uh, in generator we have several different templates provided by different people. Um, I think it would be also nice to um, uh, then to to kind of manage who's reviewing uh, which template because we know who contributed where. Um, so that's a. Would you enable the dismiss, uh, dismiss state pull request approvals on new commits? Like in this way, if you approve it and then I commit with some rubbish, I still I need a new review and I'm not allowed to to merge. Or you will you will be flexible on that? Uh, so you're asking a question, or or uh, that we should make it possible? Uh, it's so, it's a it's a question. So I I would say. I mean, if we are requesting um, a review from the reviewer, we should not allow dismissing the 
um, the request for change, right? So this means that you can approve it, then I will commit something and it will be possible to merge it even though no one has re reviewed it because your previous approval will still be valid. Okay, so you're, um, so you're suggesting that uh, we should make sure that the settings we set because it's possible that, uh, let's say I approve today, but then uh, the day after you do some additional commits, then my approval should be dismissed and I should be uh, requested again to, to approve it. That's what mm -hmm. you're saying. Okay, yeah, I, I would say uh, that should be uh, by default enabled uh, this um, clean of the approvals after commits. Okay, because in, in, in the screenshot that, that you have here is disabled, is the, the first config. This state pull request approvals. Mm -hmm. Sure, I'm gonna make a note. Let me save it. Uh, okay. So basically, there's no, uh, you're okay with code owners, right? Okay. Cool. Um, so this way we went through this uh, issue, um, after the meeting, I'm gonna have to make sure that we uh, we get this into, uh, in, in place. Um, so I'm gonna follow up and, and make sure that it all happens in the project. Um, so this way we went until the, uh, we got until the end of the, of the agenda. Um, Anything else from your side, guys? Any comments, questions? I have a question on how to start uh, contributing. So if there is an issue, like the one that you that you pointed to me about a uh, Spring template, shall I assign that thing to myself? Shall I just leave a comment saying that I'm looking to it? How do you handle it? So for sure you cannot assign it to yourself. I don't think if you're not a member of the organization, you're not allowed to, uh, you don't have, an option to assign it to yourself, I think. Only members of the organization can do it. So um, if you're interested with picking up the issue, just start a discussion under the issue. I mean, ping us on, okay. on Slack as well, if you want on the generator channel, especially in, in case of generator. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, definitely uh, do a discussion under the issue as well. Okay, perfect. Fran, any comments from you to the question? Did you hear the question? Uh, not really. Uh, actually, ah, okay. I, I missed the last uh, three minutes because I was just uh, <laughs> getting inside home. Um, no, actually, I think uh, you, last time I, I, I listened, you were discussing about approving, then changing something, right? And if the approval still makes sense or not, right? You were discussing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but now Francesco asked the question like if he, um, for example, he's interested with this issue um, about the Java template. And uh -huh. uh, the question is like how he can start and make sure that it's handled by him. If he should assign it to himself, if we assign it to himself or how he should kind of uh, okay. start contributing. So I said like, uh, mentioning the issue that you're on it, uh, talk to us on the generator channel in case of, in case of generator mm -hmm. or on general channel. And then let's just make sure that you're picking that up. But, yeah. and I then ask you if maybe you have some different comment here. Not really, actually, uh, we don't have yet a, a, a process for onboarding people. That's something that we would like to, to create, but um, yeah, actually, Lucas is <laughs> is now uh, helping with these processes. 
with all this stuff, right? So yeah, and probably with the collaboration of uh, everyone, we will be able to make uh, or to create a process for newcomers, new contributors, right? So yeah, nothing really, I don't have a, anything really relevant to, to say about aside what yeah. you said. So, so yeah. Yeah. So like, just to summarize, as I said, so just uh, make a comment under the issue that you're on it. And so the others that follow the issue are subscribed to the issue, they, they know. Cool. As well. And then if you have some issues with the generator itself, of course, um, for real time discussions, use the generator channel in case of generator. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments? I think that was the last item right on the agenda. Yeah, that was, yeah. Okay, so not question, but a comment. Um, I would like to, um, well, I'd like to thank you, Lucas, for uh, jumping into the, the, to the meeting today and taking care of it. Um, People must know that it's uh, his third week uh, working on async API, and um, it's his first time running the meeting. So, I mean, all uh, all I have is just uh, good words for you, man. Is you're doing a great job, and and thanks for uh, thanks for taking care. That's it. It's, that's my comment. Thanks uh, for me. It was so natural that I didn't didn't even indicate it at the beginning. Sorry? Will be, I mean, for me, it was so natural to uh, take over the meeting and run the meeting that I didn't even indicate at the beginning, like, people, if you're confused that you don't see Fran, but me, blah, 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 I didn't even. <laughs> so what happened to, to, to Fran's hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why Michal asked me about my new haircut. Exactly. <laughs> and, your, and your Polish accent. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I mean, thanks. Thanks a lot. You're doing a good job. So thanks. Okay. So I would say if there are no more questions, comments. Um, thanks a lot for joining, guys. Um, see you in two weeks. Uh, there will be also after this meeting. Uh, shortly after this meeting, I'm going to create a issue uh, for next meeting. Um, if you're gonna have something uh, for the agenda, feel free to add your topics. Do it. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Have a great Goodbye. day, all of you. Thanks for joining. Bye. 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 Bye.